Hey guys, welcome to Microtomy 101. So for today's lesson, we're going to be talking about microtomy. So here are our learning objectives. First, we're going to define what is microtomy. Then we're going to familiarize the different types of microtomes used in the histopathology area. And then we're going to know the different types of knives used in the microtome. And then we're going to learn about trimming and sectioning. And lastly, we're going to learn about the other equipments used in microtomy. So off, let's define microtomy. What exactly is microtomy? So going back to the tissue processing phases, we started off with a tissue and then we sort of did some things with it like fixation, decalcification, clearing, impregnation, and embedding, and now we're on to microtomy. But what exactly is microtomy? It came from the two Greek terms micros and to main, meaning small and to cut. So it practically means cutting something small or cutting something to be small. And it is also the process by which a tissue is a trimmed and cut into uniformly thin slices to facilitate studies under the microscope. Or simply put, it is just cutting thin slices of embedded tissue to be put onto glass slides, period. And what do we use to cut this type of tissue? It is a mechanical device known as the microtome which will be tackled on on the next slide. Here we have a picture of the most common microtome used here and abroad, the famous rotary microtome. But first, what are the basic parts of a microtome? So first we have the block holder, where the tissue is obviously held in position, or the tissue block. And next we have the knife carrier and knife. It is used for actual cutting of tissue sections. Then we have the pawl, the ratchet feed wheel, and the adjustment screws, which are used to line up the tissue block in proper position with the knife and adjusting the proper thickness of the tissue for successive sections. Okay, so here we got a picture of the block holder. So as the name suggests, it just actually holds the block in place. As you can see, it kind of looks like a clamp, an adjustable clamp, where you can fit the tissue block inside, but not all of the tissue block part of the tissue block has to be exposed for the knife to cut it and moving on and for this picture we have the knife carrier and the knife for the knife you won't be able to see it clearly but it's hidden behind the flat metal plate and that metal plate is where the tissues or the ribbons will, will be laid out flatly as you cut them along for that red lever it is used to adjust the knife or to put it in place it is it is used to tighten or loosen the knife for the black lever on the right side, it is used to adjust the angle formed between the knife and the tissue block. And lastly, for the black lever on the left side, it is used to adjust the whole base of the knife carrier. Next, we have the pawl and ratchet feed wheel. The pawl and ratchet feed wheel are used to adjust the tissue block holder back and forth. Likewise, the pawl and the ratchet feed wheel can be adjusted counterclockwise or clockwise and lastly we have the adjustment screws so as the name suggests it actually just adjusts the thickness or how thin you want your sections to be it can be anywhere between 3 or 5 10 15 or 20 microns you name it okay so now we're done with defining microtomy we got a good glimpse of what microtomy is about and the different types of microtomes and its basic parts. Now we're going to familiarize ourselves with the different types of microtomes used in the laboratory. So here we have the types of microtomes. First off, we got a list. We have the rocking or Cambridge microtome, we have the rotary microtome, we have the sliding microtome, we have the freezing, the cryostat, and the ultra thin microtome. Keep in mind that these aren't the only microtomes there are in the world. There, there are a lot of variations at a lot of different laboratories for a lot of different purposes. But for study purposes only, this, these are the six important microtomes that you guys need to know about. So starting off with the rocking or Cambridge microtome. It was invented by Pound Welcher Fall in 1881 and can cut sections with a thickness of 10 to 12 microns. So as the name suggests, it cuts tissues in a rocking motion. So as you can see from the picture, it kind of looks like a mini seesaw, 
with those spring load balances on one side of the microtome. So it cuts your tissues. I mean, it cuts your tissues in a rocking motion back and forth, up and down. Next, we have the rotary microtome. So here we have the rotary microtome. And yes, that's the microtome that I showed you guys earlier. It is actually the most common type of microtome used for both routine and research laboratories. It was invented by Minot in 1885 to 1886 and can cut sections between 3 to 5 microns, which is pretty decent for routine purposes already. And next we have the sliding microtome. So for the sliding microtome, it was invented by Adams in 1789, so it's a bit older than the, than the rocking and the rotary microtome. It was developed for use with celloidine embedded tissue blocks. And it has two subtypes. One, we have the base sledge, and two, we have the standard sliding. The differences in between these two are base sledge microtomes are used for cutting very hard tissues or large blocks. And for the standard sliding microtome, it garnered a nickname for the most dangerous type due to the moving knife. Like in most cases, the one that is moving is always the tissue block. You know, like the in the in the rotary microtome, we have the moving tissue block, the up and down tissue block. Same with the rocking microtome. But here in the standard sliding, it's dangerous because the one that's moving is actually the knife. So when you're cutting, it's actually very dangerous to stick your finger because it might cut your finger also. So next we have the freezing microtome. Freezing microtome was invented by Quackett in 1848 and also as the name suggests, it involves a second cooling device, usually a carbon dioxide cylinder, for lowering the temperature of the knife. So as you guys can see, I highlighted the phrase there, lowering the temperature of the knife, because we're going to distinguish it from the cold microtome, which we're going to be tackling now. The cryostat, or the cold microtome. It is a refrigerated apparatus, so many of you guys might get confused between the cold microtome or the freezing microtome, like they're just one and the same, but actually they're not. So the freezing microtome is actually a type of microtome which keeps only the knife cold, where in the cryostat or the cold microtome, it keeps the entire apparatus cold, and by apparatus, I'm pertaining to an entire rotary microtome kept cold inside a chamber which has been maintained at a temperature between negative 5 to negative 30 degrees. It can cut fresh tissues within 2 to 3 minutes and cutting sections of 4 microns with ease. It can be used for fluorescent antibody staining techniques or histochemical enzyme studies. In the hospital, it is most commonly used for rapid frozen sections during intraoperative studies. And as you can see on the picture below, it's as big as your standard washing machine or dryer at home. And on the right, it's actually a picture inside. So as you can see, you can't actually stick your hand inside while cutting. Why? Because there's a glass covering on the top to keep the inside of the chamber cool between negative 5 to negative 30. So it's actually kind of a bit hard to use, but if you're actually familiar with the, with the rotary microtome, you'll actually get the hang of it in no time. And lastly, we have the ultra-thin microtome, I mean the ultra-thin microtome, the most special type of microtome that we have on the list. Why? So here we have the ultra-thin microtome. As the name suggests, it cuts ultra thin sections of tissues. It is equipped with a glass or gem grade diamond knife and is used to cut very, very thin sections, typically around 60 to 500 nanometers of tissue embedded in a special resin, an epoxy resin. For your reference, just how thin a, na a nanometer is, one nanometer is a thousand microns. So a, a while ago, we were talking about the rotary microtome being able to cut around 10 to 12 microns with ease. Now this guy cuts about 60 to 500 nanometers, and that's like almost 10 times smaller than a, than a micron. So look, looking at the picture, it is actually incorporated with an electron microscope. Why? Because at that um, size, 
a nanometer size, the naked human eye would be actually be able to accurately see how small it is or, or if the tissue is going well. So, it, so we actually need that microscope to facilitate with cutting in the, in the ultra-thin microtome. So here's a summary of the microtomes along with who embedded them, what type of embedding material is used, how thick they can cut, and some special remarks. So there it is. Okay, now we're done with defining microtomy. We got a good glimpse of that. We, we're done with familiarizing the different types of microtomes. So, so recalling we have six types of microtomes each with six different characteristics and purposes. Now we move on to the different knives used in microtomy. So we have a microtome, but what do we use to cut the tissue? Of course, we use a knife, a blade. For the knives, we have um, three types of knives, the microtome knives, the glass knives, and the diamond knives. Then we have the easier guy, the disposable blades, and we will be tackling about them one by one, starting with microtome knives. So for microtome knives, we have three types, the plano concave, the biconcave, and the plain wedge knives. Now keep in mind, these are knives, so they're not disposable. They're, they are actually being regularly uh, maintained by honing and stropping. So starting off with the plano concave, it is approximately 25 millimeters long and it, it, it gained the name plane or plano concave because one side is flat and one side is in a concave shape. As you can see with the two pictures below, profile A being the side view and as you can see it's actually flat at the bottom and with a concave side on the top. The less concave side or the flat side is used for celloidine impregnated tissues. And the more concave side is used for paraffin impregnated tissues. And moving on to the next type of microtome knife, we have the biconcave knife. It is approximately 120 meters long, so it's like 60 millimeters longer than the plano concave. And both sides are concave, as you can see on the pictures below. Side A and side B are both concave. And it is used for paraffin embedded tissues. And lastly, we have the plain wedge knife. It is approximately 100 millimeters long. Both sides are straight and it is used for paraffin and frozen sections. So looking at the picture below, it's a straight triangle. So these microtome knives are regularly sharpened to ensure smooth sectioning. Just like with any other knife, honing and stroping is done to keep it sharp. So, honing versus stroping. Honing is what you call hard sharpening. You're just actually removing the gross nicks on the knife edge. When you hone, you first moisten your honing material with silene and lubricate it with clove or mineral oil, soapy water, or liquid paraffin. And how exactly do you do honing? When, when we hone, we do 10 to 20 manual strokes of a heel to toe motion. Heel being the base of the knife that's nearest the handle, and toe being the highest point or the top point of the knife. And 30 double strokes for machines for each side. And we have three types of honing materials. We have Belgium yellow, which gives the best result, Arkansas, which gives a more polished effect, and we have the fine carborundum, which is a much coarser material used for very badly nicked knives. And after honing the knife, we proceed to stroping. It is a process whereby the burr formed during honing is removed. So we do this by doing 40 to 100 double strokes in a toe to heel motion. So it's in the opposite direction. So in here, mineral oil is not recommended and should never come in contact with a stroke since it will tend to blister and destroy the leather. So here we have a picture of a hone. So most, in most cases, the hone is made up of a rocky material, as you can see on the picture. And here we have a leather strobe. Strobes are much more fine, and as you see on the picture. So next we have the disposable blades. Disposable blades. So here sharpening and polishing are no longer required, which is a major relief for us medical technologists. Why? Because if you're going to hone and stroke 
every time before we get into cutting our paraffin embedded blocks, that's going to take a lot of time, you know, 10 to 20, then 100 double strokes, it's going to take a lot of time and effort. But for disposable blades, they can provide us with two to four thick sections, two to four micron thick sections with ease. And all we have to do is just put the blade onto the knife carrier and, and when it's dull, we just get the blade, throw it out and replace it with a new blade. Next we have glass knives, which are generally used for trimming and semi-thin sectioning of tissue blocks for electron microscopy. It is a 40 by 2.5 centimeter plate glass strip. So they look almost exactly like your cover slips, but in not in that same manner. And lastly, we have diamond knives, the most expensive type of knives, just judging by the name itself, a diamond. It is used to cut any type of resin block for electron microscopy. It is brittle and expensive, but it is very durable. So now we're done with the three learning objectives, defining microtomy fam and familiarizing with the different types of microtomes. And now we just finish knowing the different knives used in microtomy. And now we proceed to the part of microtomy we're in. Um, mem memorization isn't actually required, but what you need here in this part is actually skill. So the first three ob objectives uh, tackled more on the theoretical. Here in the trimming and sectioning, it's all about skill. So trimming versus sectioning. What exactly is trimming and what exactly is sectioning? So in trimming, simply put, it is just the process of removing excess wax and exposing the top layer of the tissue to facilitate for sectioning. In trimming, the paraffin block may be faced or rough cut by setting the micrometer at 15 to 30 microns or by advancing the block using the coarse feed mechanism. Yes, you have two options in trimming. One, you can either move the tissue block using the coarse feed mechanism, or you can just adjust the block, I mean, adjust the micrometer setting the adjustment screw by 15 to 30 microns. It's up to you on which method you'll use. But be careful because it is possible to damage the tissue by gouging or scoring too much when trimming the block. There are cases when the block gets split in half, not because of the knife, but because of the blood force that is put into when it's first trimmed. So in trimming, we have two types, I mean two phases. We have coarse trimming and fine trimming. In coarse trimming, we're just, re we're just removing the excess wax off the block. And in fine, in fine trimming, we're exposing the surface of the tissue, but we're not cutting the tissue yet. We're just exposing its surface to prepare it for sectioning. And in sectioning, it is a process whereby the tissues are cut into uniformly thin slices or sections with the aid of the microtome. And there are three types of sectioning depending on the type of embedding material that you guys use, which is a paraffin section, a cellulidine section, and a frozen section. So in the part of microtomy, sectioning is the most part where your skill is very, very, very valuable because if you guys fail to section the tissue properly, and in that case, sometimes the tissue runs out or, or, or run out already, that's going to be a big problem. So in, in sectioning, it has to be accurate and precise and also smooth because it is very, very important that we give the pathologist a good smear, a good stain, and a good section to be able to make a diagnosis. Sectioning and floating. What exactly is floating first? Floating is the act of putting your section tissue or your ribbons onto the glass line. So points to remember, your blocks should be arranged in, an, in a numerical order on an ice tray or cooling mechanism, cooling both the tissue and the paraffin wax to a consistent temperature. In, in the hospital setting, when you're cutting 50 blocks or 20 blocks, you can't just line them out on the table, ex exposing them to room temperature because as time goes by, the paraffin wax gets a little soft, and when the paraffin wax gets too soft, it's going to be very hard, or not very hard, but it's going to actually be hard to cut your tissues in a very good ribbon. So to avoid this, we place them on cool ice trays to retain the hard texture of the paraffin wax. So for routine surgical materials, they should be cut at 3 to 4 microns. The floating out of the ribbon must be smooth the trailing end of the ribbon making contact with the water first. So in floating, you have to flatten out 
your tissue as much as possible as you put it on the glass slide. This is to facilitate a very good stain and for a very good uh, in interpretation for your pathologist. And lastly, the water bath should be cleaned after each block is cut, removing debris and tissue fragments by dragging tissue paper across the surface. So this process I will show you guys later how it's done, but simply put on the water bath, every time you you float a tissue, you have to clean the surface because tendency is parts of the previous ribbons are going to stick to the next ribbon or to the next slide causing accumulation of debris which is not good so here are the problems and corresponding solutions for paraffin wax sectioning so first we have ribbon of consecutive sections are curved so block edges are not parallel the dull blade edge excessive paraffin wax and tissue varying inconsistency and solutions we can trim the block until it's parallel. We can remove the blade or move to a different area. We can trim away excess paraffin wax or we can reorient the whole block. Next, we have thick and thin sections. It's either the paraffin wax is too soft for tissue or conditions. It's either insufficient clearance angle or faulty microtome mechanisms or the blade or block is loose in the holders. So what are the solutions? We can cool the block with ice or re-embed in higher melting point wax. That's what I said earlier. That's why we keep them in the cool ice tray before we cut them at room temperature. Increase the clearance angle or maintain microtome by lubricating and calibrating it. Check for obvious faults with the microtome parts. Maybe one of course is actually basic knowledge, not just for any med tech, but for any person involving themselves with the machine before you use it before you use it for critical purposes you have to make sure that it's in its topmost condition next we can tighten the block and the blade of course next chatter or thick and thin zones parallel to blade edge causes are blade or block loose in their holders we can solve this by tightening the blade and the block holders similar to the first one next we have excessively steep clearance angle or knife tilt it is solved by, of course, reducing the angle. Next, we have tissue or paraffin wax is too hard for sectioning. Use softening liquid. In most cases, but it is not actually recommended, uh, some labs use the fabric conditioner or simply put downy to soften the liquid, I mean the, the tissue and the paraffin wax. Next, we have calcified areas in tissue. Again, calcified areas. That's why we have the process decalcification, which is to totally decalcify tissue because if we're going to cut a tissue that is calcified like your bones it's going to leave your knives with nicks and when there's a nick it's not going to cut your tissue as smoothly as it can so we have to rehydrate this and and we have to surface de decalcify the tissue next we have over dehydration of the tissue this is a, mo this, this is a common problem wherein sometimes your 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 machine breaks down so you didn't wash or you didn't keep track on how long it has been in the dehydration phase so we can make this up by re-embedding them in fresh paraffin wax next a dull blade of course of obviously when there's a dull blade you just re you just replace them or for the knives we just hone and stroke them and next we have splitting of sections right at right angles to the knife edge so we have nicks and blade Use a different part of the blade or replace, similar with the previous one. Hard particles in the tissue, it's probably due to calcified agents, so we just surface decalcify if it's just a calcium deposit. Next, we have hard particles in paraffin wax. We just remove them with fine, sharp, pointed scalpels if mineral or other particle. And next, we have sections will not form ribbons. Ribbons, as we recall, is what we call the tissues that, that had been laid out flat on the glass slide with surrounding paraffin uh, material. So the paraffin wax may be too hard for sectioning conditions. What do we do? We re-embed in lower melting point paraffin wax. Next, we have debris on the knife edge. Of course, if there's debris, we just clean it with the moist cloth embedded, I mean, moistened with silene. Next, the clearance angle is incorrect. We just adjust it to the optimal angle, which is around 27 to 32 degrees. Next, we have sections attached to block on return stroke. Next, 
I mean, so it is due to insufficient clearance angle, which can be resolved by increasing your clearance angle. It can also be due to debris on the blade edge, so we just clean them with saline. Or debris on the block, we just trim the edges of the block. Or static electricity, this is actually very, very common, so we humidify the air around the microtome or place a static guard or dryer sheets near the microtome. Next, we have incomplete section. So incomplete impregnation of the tissue with paraffin wax. We can resolve this by reprocessing the whole tissue block. We have a tissue incorrectly embedded. We re-embed the tissue, making sure orientation is correct and the tissue is flat and mold. Next, we have sections that are superficially cut. We just reface the block and cut deeper into the tissue. The next type of problem, we have excessive compression. This is due to a dull blade, so we, just, we, we can just imagine what it's like for a tissue when we cut them with a blunt blade. We're just crushing the materials and compressing them, which is destroying the whole thing. So we just replace the blade and make sure that it's sharp and make sure it's not the wrong side of the blade. The paraffin wax is too soft for the tissue, so we, we resolve this by cooling the block face and recut it. And the last set of problems are the sections expand or disintegrate on the water bath. It is due to poor impregnation of the tissue, so we reprocess the tissue or we, we reprocess the whole thing. Water temperature is too high in flotation bath. Of course, we just remove or we reduce the temperature of the flotation bath. And lastly, sections roll into a coil instead of, re of remaining flat. Now, this is the most common type of problem that we experience. The sections roll into a coil and they don't lay flat. When this happens, uh, the tissue becomes too small and there's too much paraffin on the glass slide. So how do we resolve this? Number one, if the blade is dull, use a new blade. If the rake angle is too small, reduce the blade tilt if clearance angle is excessive until you reach a good cutting angle. And lastly, the section is too thick. Just, just reduce your section thickness using your adjustment screws. So now we're done with the four learning objectives, which were the four major parts of our lesson for today. So we properly defined what is microtomy. We familiarize ourselves with the different types of microtomes. We now know the different knives used in microtomy and how to take care of them. We now know the difference between trimming and sectioning and how it should be done and what to do when problems occur. And now lastly, we have the other equipment used in microtomy. Of course, you have your flotation or your water bath. The thermostatically controlled type is preferable, but if this is unavailable, water from a hot water tap can be used, although this can give rise to air bubbles, which may be trapped under cut sections. The temperature of the water should be between 5 and 10 degrees Celsius below the melting point of the paraffin wax. So if your paraffin wax has a melting point of 56, you, you, you just set it to 50 degrees Celsius. Alcohol or small quantities of detergent may be added for reducing surface tension and allowing the section to flatten out with greater ease. Next we have the drying oven or hot plate. What is this for? Small drying ovens are now available incorporating a fan, especially designed for drying tissue sections on your glass slides. With the temperature setting at the melting point of the wax, no obvious damage is done to the sections and drying is complete in 30 minutes. So a, a while ago for your flotation bath, it is five, I mean, it is around 10 degrees Celsius below the melting point of your paraffin wax. But for your drying or hot plate, it is set at the melting point of the wax so that only the, the tissue remains on the glass slide. A hot plate may also be used instead of a drying oven. For more delicate tissues such as brain, a lower drying temperature must be used to avoid splitting and cracking of the section due to excessive heat. In such cases, 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours or longer is recommended. Why? Because brain tissues are very hard to process and is very, very delicate. They're not like your breast tissues or other common tissues. Next, you have your forceps and or hairbrush. Now, why would you need a hairbrush? These tools are needed for handling sections during cutting and for removing folds and creases on the sections during floating out in the water bath. You'll see with a picture later on what the hairbrush is for. And the last equipment that we need is, of course, clean glass slides. For routine work, 7 to 6 by 25 millimeter slides, 
that are 1.0 to 1.2 millimeters thick are usually preferred because they do not break easily. And frost edit slides are generally used where the identification number of the section can be inscribed with a pencil. Automatic slide labeling machines are also now available. Okay, so here we have a picture of a general rundown of the microtomy process involving trimming and sectioning. So first we trim the tissue, then afterwards we cool them by placing them on our ice blocks, which I mentioned earlier. Next we cut the tissue and make ribbons of the tissue. Now see the picture, the girl is, is holding a, a forcep. This is to facilitate the proper ribbon or proper sections of the tissues. And next is a picture of a flotation water bath. And lastly is a picture of a tissue on a slide. So that is your main goal. The, the, whole pro, the whole point of this topic today for microtomy is this, that very glass slide with a tissue on the center. That is your main goal for this topic. So remember that in, in fishing out or in, or in floating the tissue, you have to place them on the center, not too far to the sides. Why? Because if you place them too far to the side, when it comes to, its, to the staining procedure, it may damage your, your tissue or worse, it may completely eradicate your tissue. So this picture shows you guys why we need a hairbrush or in this case, a paintbrush to facilitate us with the proper ribboning of your tissue. Notice how the tissue is not completely fitted inside the tissue block holder and how most of it is exposed outside and look at the surface. It's very flat and it's very clean. That is a good placement and that is a good trimming of the tissue. Now look at the ribbons. That is a proper ribbon with no coiling, with no curves or whatsoever and no nicks on the knife. And look at the tissue. That is your main goal to have the tissue be exposed and be as flat as possible and be as even as possible as it can be. And here's another picture of a very good section or a ribbon. See how it retained this, the rectangular shape of, of the paraffin block and how the tissue is laid out in the middle. And that ends our discussion for microtomy. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this lesson and for your references, I put them down below for the two books that I use, your Gregorius and your Bancroft. Thanks for watching.